Hey, New Song EM, uh, I want to thank you for joining us on our worship today. Uh, it's Resurrection Sunday. Jesus has risen. You know, as much as there is much grief and sadness in the story of the crucifixion of Jesus, there is much reason to be joyful and rejoice because of his resurrection. We must never forget that in our lives. Now, before we go into our worship, there are a couple of announcements I would like to make. Uh, we do have a new song email list, a new song EM e email list. So please make sure to sign up for that so you can get uh, daily updates from us pastors or leaders or any other updates about what's going on with EM right now. Uh, also, we have also moved our uh, offering to online through Bill Pay. Uh, there should be instructions that come through come to you through email. So another reason for you to actually sign up for our email list if you want to continue doing our offering and tithes. Uh, lastly, if there's anything that we as New Song EM, us pastors that we can do for you, however we can pray for you, however we can uh, help in your needs, please do not hesitate to let us know.
day, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, at this time, we remember this time of Easter. Lord, what you have done on that cross. And Lord, three days later, that you came back for us. Lord, that we can come, that we can gather. Lord, even if it's not in person, Lord, that no matter where we are, that we can declare that you are alive. Lord, that you put yourself on that cross for us. So Lord, we just pray that this would be our time that we lift up our praise to you. Lord, as we continue to um, be a church as we continue to um, meet online, no matter what, that we would continue to remember why we do all of that. It's because of what you have done on this day. So we just thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, New Song English Ministry. It's Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, during this time, uh, we hope that you guys are doing well, that you guys are staying safe. We know that uh, times are, are crazy, uh, but we also know that our God is always consistent and faithful. So as we remember Christ's resurrection today, let us worship him fully as one body, as one family together. Today's message is going to be from Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. I'm going to read it out loud together in one voice. And in honor of reading God's word, let us all stand together. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as we go into your word today, help us to worship you fully. Help us to hear and be reminded of your resurrection. But let it stir in us the joy to worship and praise you. Lord, we thank you for your grace, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we go into this sermon, uh, I, I'm reminded of um, the great, some of the great themes of movies. And one of the biggest themes that we find is the comeback victory, the victory where the hero rises up again. He rises up, and he comes back, and he takes over. He rises up and he brings uh, his people into victory. We see this you know, uh, in a few different movies. Uh, some of the biggest scenes I remember are uh, Gandalf the White at Helm's Deep when he comes back and, and he rides in to bring victory to the people. We see it in the Black Panther when T'Challa, he comes back we thought he was dead, but he comes back and he wins back his land and his people. We see it uh, in the last Avengers movie when Thanos is coming and he's trying to take over the world and destroy all of humanity. And there was one scene that I remember where everybody cheered on. And it was when Captain America held out his arm. You see Thor's hammer fly across the screen, screen and Captain America grabs it. And we see that he was worthy. And then goes right back into battle to take Thanos down. We see this, this idea of the, the hero rising again. And there's this, this charge in us. There's this, there's this huge joy in us. We were fearful of what was to come, but we bring that together and we have joy because we know that the hero is back and will ride into victory. We see that here as well with Jesus who was brought 
into trial and he died on the cross. An idea that no one at that time in, in that context would have thought that Jesus, who was calling himself the Messiah, would actually die. They thought he would be bringing Israel into new victory and new conquest in the world. But instead, we find they find that, that this man who is going around preaching and sharing the word of God and exclaiming that he was God's son, that he was the Messiah, ended up on the cross and he died. His disciples were fearful. They were broken. Their leader, their king, their hero was down. But in this moment, we see the beginning of the return. The main point of the sermon is that the king is risen in fear and joy for his people. The king is risen in fear and joy for his people. The first point of my sermon is that there is great fear in not, know, in not knowing the risen king. There is great fear in not knowing the risen king. The great fear that we find uh, is seen in two different groups. There's a great fear from the guards who are watching over Jesus. And there's also fear that was seen in the two Marys that came to visit Jesus. But I want us to start with uh, the context of, of the, the guards first. Because they showed a great fear in them. The scriptures tell us that there was an earthquake that came and, and, and it, it rocked the world. It rocked the tomb. The tomb that Jesus was in was rocked, and, and there came an angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord descended, and he rolled back the stone, this great earthquake. And, and from uh, Jesus' death, there was two earthquakes. This is the second earthquake that was shared. The first one was when he actually died, and it shook the world. It shook the, the city, and, and, and it shows that the veil was torn in the temple after that earthquake. The Holy of Holies was open, and now we see another earthquake. And an earthquake that opened the tomb that released Jesus to us all. As we see this earthquake, the scriptures tell us that an angel of the Lord appeared and descended from heaven. An angel of the Lord, and we, we've talked about this idea that an angel would come in many uh, different instances throughout scripture. We've seen angels come and share and, and, and reveal themselves, and many people were fearful and afraid. Uh, and we've talked about even that for us, if we would have seen an angel of God appear before us, wouldn't we be scared? Wouldn't we be worried? It's very true. When this angel of the Lord came, the angel of the Lord came as a messenger of God with a message that Christ was risen. But as he came, as he came to share this message, we see a fear fall upon the guards. In verse 4, it says, And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. We see that these guards, they, they, they feared and they fainted. They became like dead. Their reaction to seeing this angel of God was, was fear that caused them to faint. Even Jesus, or even uh, these guards who, who are here, they're, they're, it's, it, it's thought and believed that they weren't just, just simple guards. They weren't just guards that you would find at the mall. No, these were guards that were trained. They were guarding a tomb that was covered and of a very high-profile person. So these guards weren't just regular guards. They were Roman guards that were, were not easily scared. But in the midst of seeing this angel of God, they, they, they feared and they fell. They didn't understand. They didn't know where these angels came from. They didn't know that God was here sending this message to them. And they fell. The fear that they had, the great fear that they felt from this angel, it was because they didn't know God. They didn't know what was to come. They didn't know who was here for them. The second point of my sermon is that there is great fear that leads to joy in knowing the risen king. There is also a fear that we find in the Marys. 
And this fear actually leads them into joy because they know God. The guards, they feared and they fell and, and, and they, they didn't have any other reaction because they didn't know God. But for the Marys, when they saw the angels react, then the angel come, they reacted in fear, but they heard, they waited, they listened. They waited to see what sort of message this angel would bring from God to them. Although they were fearful, They listened, and it became a great joy. It says in verse 8 that after the angel shared the message that Christ was alive and that they needed to go to the disciples and share this news, in verse 8 it says, So they, the Marys, departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. The fear that they they saw God come down to send a message through an angel. This idea that, that God was there, this idea that this heavenly being was there is fearful for them. This idea that, that the Son of God had actually risen from death was fearful. How could this man rise again? If this man rises from the dead, not because someone had come and risen him, but that he himself had, had risen on his own, what sort of power would this man have? And it drew fear, but then because they knew who he was, because they knew God, because they followed him, they understood, and that fear turned into great joy. They knew that this Jesus that died for them, they knew that this Jesus who had risen was with them, and they found great joy. We can find fear with God, but the biggest difference is whether we know him or not. As Christians, when we think about death, when we think about this time with the coronavirus and what may or may not happen, there might be fear of the unknown, fear of the future, and ultimately fear of death. But as Christians, that fear means nothing to us. That fear, although it may be real, is nothing compared to the great power of God in us. Those that don't know God, they may fear death because they don't know what will come. But for us as Christians, we know that although we might fear death in some ways, there is a great joy knowing on the other side we will be with our Father in heaven. So fear is, our reaction to fear is determined by our faith. My final point of the sermon is that there is great salvation in knowing the risen king. When we see the risen king, when we hear of the risen king, there is fear, but there is joy for Christians. But for us also, there is great salvation. The disciples, they when when the Marys came to the disciples and, and shared with them, told them about Jesus rising again, they got to see him. They got to see Jesus alive. Jesus appears to them. It says in verse 9, And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. They saw Jesus alive again, the same Jesus who was on the cross and had died. His body was broken and his blood was poured out. They were alive, or he was alive. Jesus was alive as he meets them. As he sees them, they're taken aback. They fall in reverence and they worship him. The disciples knew that when Jesus rose again, that Jesus, when he resurrected, many of the dots started to connect. That many of the the, the ideas and and great teachings that he gave when he was preaching about being God, when he was sharing all these things, they started to connect the dots and understood who he truly was. When they witnessed his greatness, they experienced what greater faith looks like. They experienced what salvation looked like. They found security. They found security in the confirmation of who he was and how he responded. For us as Christians, 
when we see Jesus, when we see the greatness that he works, when we see how he moves, do we find security? Do we find hope? Do we find a future? In Romans 5, 6 through 11, uh, the word of God says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Jesus died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more. Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we should also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. When they realized who Jesus was, when they saw him before them alive, they worshipped because they knew that all that Christ had been preaching was true. They might have doubted a little. Some of the stuff that Jesus said, when they didn't fully understand, it might have seemed a little crazy to them. Maybe they doubted. Maybe they didn't understand what he meant by his body being bread and they must eat it, or his blood being wine and they must drink it. Maybe they didn't quite understand, but when they saw Jesus in front of them, things began to, began to make sense. They began to understand that Christ had come, that this Messiah had come for them. There was security. There was confirmation. As they found this security and confirmation, they rejoiced and they worshipped. They saw that his teaching was real. They saw that he was truly who he said he was. And they understood. What they didn't know, what they didn't quite understand, now began to make sense and they began to worship him. Because Jesus truly was who he said he was. When we look at this story, when we see how the disciples responded, when we see how the Marys responded, there is this moment of, of awe in who Christ was, who Christ is, what he had done. But there's also that moment of great joy, worship, reverence. When we understand that Jesus came and he died for us, but then he also rose again to conquer everything in this world that could ever hold anything above us, anything against us, we can't help but rejoice. We can't help but rejoice knowing that the one who died for us, the one who rose again for us, is alive and he asks us to partake with him. Jesus came and he died for us. That we, in our sin, would be forgiven. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 14 to 21 says, For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who, might, uh, who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. For now... From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God, making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Christ came. He came as a king into Jerusalem, rode in on a donkey to a procession. He died on a cross 
that he wasn't supposed to die on, that his body may be broken and his blood would be poured out to cleanse us and to forgive us of our sins. And he rose again that we might find joy and worship in him once again. The main point of the sermon, the king is risen in fear and joy for his people. God is greater than we could have ever imagined. God is greater than we could have ever thought. But at the same time, this same God came to die for us. For us as believers, when we understand who Jesus is, the truth behind his teachings, the reality of his salvation for us, we are transformed to respond in worship and reverence. This Resurrection Sunday, let, us re- let our reaction to the world not trump the reality of the resurrection of Christ. Don't let the fear and uncertainty of this coronavirus and the future outcome, the truth, uh, overcome the truth and reality of Christ's resurrection for life for us. He conquered death, and through that he gave us life to be able to stand firm and persevere through any worldly circumstances. Stand in victory today because we know the hero has risen. We know that Christ is risen. Let's pray. Father God, as we saw in your word, as we are reminded of you rising again to conquer death, to conquer sin, help us to remember that we are brought into that. We are brought into life. We are brought into salvation. And we get to worship you together during this time. As we remember your resurrection, let us give you the full awe and worship and reverence that you deserve as our risen king today in this time. Let us never forget. Let us always remember. And let us lean on you. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy over our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. Father God, Lord, in, on this Resurrection Sunday, we remember that you are our risen King. We remember that you rose again for us to show us your true greatness, to, to show us that there is nothing that can conquer you, not even death. So if there are any fears or worries or anxieties in us today, help us to look beyond that, to see that we have a God who is greater than all. And let us lean on you today. Let us lean on you tomorrow. And let us lean on you forevermore. Father, you are good, you are sovereign, and you are gracious. And you are all powerful. Let us lean on these truths as we worship you today on this Resurrection Sunday. Let us, as one body, join together, proclaim to this world your greatness, and let us love you forevermore. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We just want to thank you, New Song English Ministry, for joining us today on this Resurrection Sunday. We hope and pray that you're able to rejoice today knowing that Christ gives us victory over all. We pray that you will be well. Thank you for joining us. We love you and we miss you.